Hi there, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. I have a magic pill I want to sell you. It'll help you make more money, be happier, I'm listening. look thinner, and have better relationships. It's a revolutionary new pharmaceutical product called Late No More. Uh, Just I'm one dose out. every day will allow you to show up on time, greatly enhancing your life and the lives of those around you. Now, all joking aside, okay. I'm not sure we were joking. No. <laughs> Being late is un unacceptable. I know you tell me that every week. Yes. While the sound, while it sounds harsh, it's the truth, and sometimes that should be said more often. I don't care if you're attending a dinner party, a conference call, or a coffee meeting. Punctuality says a lot about you. I know it does. Being late bothers me so much that just thinking about it makes me queasy. Hmm. Well, maybe not quite queasy, but uh, being late, which does occasionally happen. Yeah usually causes me to break out into a nervous sweat. It's not that writer. bad, Ronnie, really. <laughs> the later I am, the more it looks like I've sprung a leak. You're leaking, Ronnie. Catch me more than 15 minutes late, and it looks like I've been swimming. Catch me outside. <laughs> How about that? It seems like most people consider a meeting time or deadline to be merely a mild advisory of something that might happen. You know, a suggestion. Right. I've been called uptight and unreasonable, he says, or variations prefaced with expletives. In a world that feels perpetually late, raising the issue of punctuality isn't a way to win popularity contests. And you know what, Ronnie? I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the writer says there's a reason we set meeting times and deadlines. It allows for coordination of efforts, mm -hmm. minimizes time sure. and effort waste, sure. and helps set expectations. I know. Think of how much you would get done if everyone just chilled out and went with the flow. Nothing. It would be the definition of inefficiency. <laughs> See? It's probably not that hard to imagine, considering just last week, the writer had 13, yes, he counted, different people blow meeting times or miss deadlines. Uh, it feels like a raging epidemic, seemingly smoothed over, smoothed over by a barrage of my, my bads. Sorry, man, you know how it goes. Uh, the desired response is, it's all good, but the reality is, it's really not okay. Here's what it is. Disrespectful. Being on time is about respect. It signals that you value and appreciate the other person. If you don't respect the meeting participants, why are you meeting with them in the first place? It is also inconsiderate. Unintentionally being late demonstrates an overall lack of consideration for the lives of others. You just don't care, do you? No. Big timing. Uh, intentionally being late is about power. Mm -hmm. It's showing the other person or people that you're a big deal mm -hmm. and you have the upper hand in a relationship. It's also called being a dick. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> No, not in a good way. When you miss meeting times or deadlines, your credibility takes the trajectory of a lead balloon. If you can't be counted on to be on time, how could you possibly have credibility around far tougher tasks? It is unprofitable. Let's consider a scenario where, say, five people are holding a meeting at 2 p.m. You're sauntering in 10 minutes late, just wasted 40 minutes of the other people's time. Let's say the organization bills $200 an hour, are you paying the $133 bill? Somebody certainly is. Disorganized is what it is. If you can't keep your calendar, what other parts of your life are you teetering on the edge of complete disaster? Being late signals, at best, that you're barely hanging on and probably not someone to be associated with. Yeah, overly busy. Everyone likes to equate business, busyness, mm -hmm. with importance, but mm -hmm. truly successful, no, that's BS. Uh, having a perpetually hectic schedule just signals you can't prioritize or say no, neither of which is an endearing trait. It's hard, but it's true. Yeah, and then there's the flakiness. Yeah. Apparently some people just flake out, which drummers. seems to mean, <laughs> drummers, always drummers, to mean that they're arbitrarily decided not to do the thing they committed to at the very last minute. And that's seriously ridiculous. Yeah, no, I know that some people have anxiety and that happens, but perpetually, I'm sorry, no. Yeah. Megalomaniacal, 
While most grow out of this by the age of eight, some genuinely believe that they are the center of the universe. <laughs> yep. It's not attractive, people. No, this is also called <laughs> Donald Trump syndrome. <laughs> Do you want to be compared to Donald Trump? Well, not his hair. I know. I, I, have, sure. I have much better hair. Sometimes a true emergency does happen, or an outlier event transpires. Uh, when it happens, try to give a very detailed account of why you were late, apologize profusely, make sure the other person knows that you take it very seriously, and assure them it won't happen again. So paying attention to punctuality is not about being judgy or stressed. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It makes room for caring, considerate, thoughtful people I want in my life whether that's friends or colleagues or family. Uh, think of how relaxing your life would be if everyone just did what they said they did yeah. uh, when they said they'd do it. Mm -hmm. uh, a good place to start is with yourself and a great motto is something I was taught as a child, five minutes early is on time, on time is late, late is unacceptable. All right, so we've learned, well, what have we learned exactly? Being late is unacceptable, but friends, we have conflicting stories here because today our next story says we all have that friend or maybe we are that friend <laughs> who is late to every single lunch, sh uh, bachelor party, school board meeting ever put in the calendar and spends most Sundays slinking into the back pew of church hoping not to draw attention. While southerners pride themselves on good manners which includes timeliness some people simply seem incapable of being on time. However, science says people who are always late are more successful and live longer. Wow. Well, it's certainly a frustrating characteristic, both for the people waiting to order lunch until the tardy friend makes their appearance. There is that. And for the well-intentioned. But perennially late person turns out to be a silver, has a silver lining to it. Tell me more, Ron. A recent body of scientific work reveals that the traits tend to make people late are the very same traits that can make them live longer and lead more productive lives. Science has shown that stress is incredibly bad for overall health. We know that. People who were late typically feel less stressed, unconcerned with deadlines, and generally chill. That can lead to lower blood pressure, lower risks of heart disease, greater cardiovascular health, lower risk of stroke, and lower chance of depression, all of which can prolong life. Optimism can also affect productivity and success. A study among salesmen revealed that optimists sold 88% more than their pessimistic colleagues. They perform better because they have a better outlook. Similarly, some chronically late people are perfectionists who can't leave the house until the dishwasher is empty and the laundry is folded. Um, that may be frustrating trait in a friend, but it is a desirable characteristic in an employee and can lead to more successful career. You know, another reason that a person may end up perpetually tardy is that they are simply engrossed in another activity and lose track of time. I did that on my lunch hour the other day. Candy Crush doesn't count that. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. <laughs> Being passionate about a subject can translate to long-term success, which means late people may end up being very successful. Business leaders like Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winifred, <laughs> Warren Buffet, and Jeff Bezos have all weighed in on the fact that being truly passionate about your work is the secret to success. So the next time someone is late, Ask them what they were working on. It may be enlightening. Yeah, and see, that's what you're not doing with me. I, I I'll give you that. Why are you late, Lou? Because <laughs> I, I was playing Candy Crush. <laughs> no. But see, I, I never ask you why you're late. I just do this. Yeah, you do. You I do. just look at my watch. But see, I've seen that so much, it doesn't matter. It doesn't phase me anymore. <laughs> and finally, it's important to understand that for some people, lateness is not entirely their fault because they may have a completely different sense of time than you. Mm -hmm. A team of scientists put one minute on the clock and asked two different groups of people with type A, am, you know, the ambitious drive okay. driven people, or the type B, the relaxed creative people That's personalities, me. and asked them to guess how much time had passed. Their study revealed that the people with type A personalities guessed that an average of 58 seconds had passed, uh -huh. while those with type B personalities thought an average of 77 seconds had passed. Chill. That's a 19 second difference in perception. Could add quickly, add up quickly, leading someone to be 
very late to lunch. The next time someone is tardy to the party, <laughs> I think that's what we'll call this episode. Tardy to the party. Keep in mind that they may be happier, healthier, and more productive, and then mull that over while you order an extra appetizer to eat while you wait for them to show up. <laughs> you know what, my son, I have no idea why, but he takes him like at least an hour to get ready to go somewhere. So if we want to take him out to dinner, we tell him we're leaving at four o'clock, which means we're going to be out the door at five o'clock. For the senior citizen discount at Denny's. <laughs> yes, uh, because I want to be traveling right when the traffic is the thickest. Of course. Yeah, right at 5 p.m. Yeah. So we went to a Kings game on his birthday, uh -huh. trying to avoid traffic. I had an unbelievable parking space saved for me under the arena where the players oh, right, park. Right. And but the t the window when I had to be in there was pretty tight, and of course he was late. Yep. We made it by the skin of our teeth, mm -hmm. literally with thirty seconds to spare. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating. And of course, every time every every red light you're stuck at, you just start steaming just a little bit more and a little bit more. And you have less patience with other drivers. Oh God, yes. Yep. So personally, I would rather be at least five minutes early, at the very least five minutes early, than even one minute late. Uh, and I don't know why, I, I have this genetic flaw where I hate to disappoint people, and I think it might have something to do with that. So, and also... In, OCD? Yeah, a little, a little OCD. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm one of those people that I just kind of get caught up in what I'm doing. But you know the other thing too yeah. is, uh, for instance, if I were to drive from my house to your house, and you would say to me, how long does that take? It feels like 30 minutes, Ron. Uh, I think that's about right, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So I try to anticipate, but I'm not always right. Right. You know, and if yeah. you're gonna like, say 30 minutes, you might be 35 minutes late, I mean, five minutes late because there's traffic. You yeah. Know? That happens. You, you can't just, anticipate no. over a 30 minute drive how yeah, long it's gonna take. exactly, you yeah. know. So I try to leave on time, it's just sometimes I just get caught up in it. I, I get it. All right. So what we've learned today is conflicting. Yeah. Well, Two sides hand, to every coin. Yeah. One hand, don't be late. Right. On the other hand, you don't, know what? Don't be early. <laughs> no. <laughs> never. What time is the party? Nine o'clock? Really? I'll be there about 9.45. Yeah. Yeah. Once everybody's in there. Settled in. All right. That'll do it for this episode of Men Are So Smart. We're late. We got to get out of here. Let's go. Look at the time. We'll look below for the in the description for all of our information, the sources for our stories, uh, also our blogs, our social media, our website, and our sponsors. If you have a moment, please subscribe to the channel. We got a couple of new subscribers last week. I was really pumped oh, nice. up on. Yeah. Nice. So uh, you could do it too. It doesn't cost a dime, and it means a lot to both Ronnie and myself. Holy cow, I can't take my eyes off that Cadillac over there, by the way. You want to do shoot a show in front of that? Man, that's spectacular. All right, we'll do that on the next Men Are So Smart.